And here we are with uh, Vlad Canelli, Nolas Valent. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, I'm great. Thanks Fine. for having me. Thank you for uh, your coming to this interview and accepting to do this interview with me. Uh, should we start by should we start by asking you what Valent means? What does it mean? You know, your uh, signature says Valent. It's kind of a uh, yeah, I used to. Um, it started with um, the idea that it's too hard to pronounce, and I, I thought I need a, a name or something that was easier to, to people for the for people to get it. So um, I Valent comes from basically my middle name is Valentin, and it's kind of a combination between. Like I took Valent and added the W because there's Vlad Valentin and there was like two V's and turned into a W and it's sort of it's something a whole like that. Formula. Um, so it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't mean much right now. Um, the stuff that's maybe a year old. I think two years ago I started using my name. Uh, because I thought, you know what, if people like me enough, they're going to learn my name and they're going to learn how to pronounce it. So that's, I mean, I remember I was uh, a little kid and I liked Arnold Schwarzenegger so much that I I actually learned how to spell that crazy name. So I yeah, thought, you know what, through that, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, pronouncing that Schwarzenegger thing in our childhood. Yeah. <laughs> not, no. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. So, who is Vlad so that, Valentin uh, so. Canelli? Who are you? <laughs> Where am I? Um, I'm just uh, a guy yeah. trying to trying to get somewhere. Um, uh, get somewhere in art. I don't know. What can I say? Um, get somewhere in mm -hmm. art. Are you? Yeah, what, yeah. Uh, how do you introduce yourself to people? Are you a concept artist? Are you a digital painter? Are you a tutor? Um, I guess um, my main uh, goal, I mean, where I want to be, I think it's an illustrator. Um, or maybe not an, an illustrator usually delivers finished, rendered, tightly rendered work. And I kind of hate that. I want to do a lot of sketching. And I want to be, I want to get really good at uh, this dynamic, quick sketching stuff. Maybe even storytelling, story-driven illustrations. Um, so right now I'm doing a lot of concept art. Um, but that's, that's, uh, it's just a uh, pass I'm going through. So, and it, it helps with you know designing, and uh, you kind of have to design most of the time, even when you're doing. When I want, I mean, as um, regarding to what I, where I want to go, I want to design my own stuff as well. So, it, doing concept art does help a lot. I mean, I'm gonna get a lot of. Uh, insight from uh, an experience into designing my own stuff when when creating illustrations because not always you get to design or uh, to illustrate a character that's already designed you know so sometimes you also have to come up with so um yeah i guess right now i'm a concept artist i do a lot of concept art um um but i also have illustration uh project so, but uh, it, it didn't go very well I'm so far sure it, it's going all awesome actually um, so you uh, actually see your art as the final piece so uh, we know that doing concept art is actually for another uh, means you're doing concept art for games you'll be co uh, doing concept art for um, movies maybe and the concept art itself isn't the final yeah. product so you want to be able to illustrate yes. and do illustrations that they are uh, the final product. 
No? Final product, exactly, yes, yes. Because I'm focusing a lot on, on aesthetics, and aesthetics don't mean nothing in, in the concept art industry because they want design, they don't want art. And nowadays, it's also, it, they kind of want to give up this idea, this name, the concept artist is no more, there's the concept designer, which actually designs stuff. And there's no artsy business, no mm -hmm. except for the projects I'm working on, which is actually you're doing concept art as a final product for like board games and stuff. Cause mm -hmm. you still have to create characters that don't exist. You still have, you know, uh, they still have armor and stuff. And you have to design all that based on uh, some criteria, but um, that is the final product. So you, it's gonna, it's gonna be some, maybe some cards, card art or background art or, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, GM screen art, you know, stuff like stuff that uh, the player will see eventually. So that's the final product. Uh, but if you if you're working on um, um, a game, for instance, let's say God of War, uh, everything you do is not going to be seen by uh, clients, by players, unless they buy maybe the art of book or something. So it depends on the purpose. So I really like, I'm really driven into aesthetics and I really, I mean, if you look at my work, you're definitely um, getting a, I mean, you're definitely, definitely noticing that I um, put a lot of time into my brush work and yeah. put a lot of time into my style and make something like look really, really nice visually. You know, I, I, really care about aesthetics yeah, you. but at the same time i kind of i kind of hate rendering so i gotta go somewhere in between yeah i was going to talk about your style uh your style looks very markery you it seems like uh you actually done them with copy markers um uh, does it come from your traditional work or do you like this style and how did you develop your style uh just talk about your style for that. Um, I don't think it, it was deliberate. I think it was um, something that I gained during you know the last few years. Um, I started with you know like so many uh, young artists nowadays are um, um, trying to are very. Um, um, how should I tell? How should I put it? Up? Um, they're very focused getting a style, you know, and they're very, yeah. very worried that oh, people don't recognize my work yet because I don't have a style. Mm -hmm. um, and I think actively searching for a style is uh, is not a good idea. I mean, you have to follow your heart and get inspiration. It's either getting inspiration from old masters or um, young, um, um, I mean, established artists that you like in the present, or like. Um, but um, the idea is, um, you don't want to copy a hundred percent like an artist, you know, because you're gonna become an, uh, a mirror image or of him. You're gonna become a shadow of him. Like uh, if you copy, I'd say a lot of people copy Piotr Jablonski. Yeah. So he's like, I see a lot of people um, looking at for looking to looking at his art and just trying to copy his style because he's very iconic, very different. And every time I see that, I'm like, oh, this guy looked too much at Piotr. That's something that uh, you're gonna be characterized by. I mean, it, it is actually. It's you're gonna if you look at if you borrow too much from an artist, people were gonna associate you with that artist, and you're gonna become you know you're not gonna be happy about that. Mm -hmm. Trust me. So what you wanna do is um, take from different artists, take from several artists. Like if you even if you look at old masters' work, I don't know about you, but I don't like everything I see and I have uh, I'm looking at thinking of uh, favorite artists right now and 
they're not a hundred percent um i don't a hundred percent agree with their decisions but most of the most of the stuff is amazing so thinking of frank frazetta like he's got amazing flow and uh very very good rhythm i took a lot from that but i don't always agree with, with his shapes for instance you know so you don't have to just copy everything you see in an artist just uh take things that you really like and at some point you'll get to like 10 20 artists to you'll, you'll grab something from each of them and before you know it you'll get a style because you take all that information all that stuff that you actually liked and you're putting it into your own work and it's going to be unique because it's not going to be too much of Piotr is not going to be too much for is not going to be you know it's going to be you because that's the things that you actually like and you're being attracted to and it, they kind of um, um, describe you as an artist so that, that will be an advice like forget about if you don't have a style right now forget about searching for it, actively searching for it, and just follow the stuff that you like. Just take things that you like. And actually, uh, I remember I had, at some point, I was I was drawing a lot, and, and then, like, five years ago, I was drawing like crazy, and sometimes in some drawings or some a thing that I, I don't know, it was a value thing, it was a, a shape thing, I really, really liked it, and I thought this is what I want to. This is what this is what my art. Um, this is what I want my art to look like. But it was just a just a part of it, right? It was yeah, I'm uh, now sharing some of your uh, words on Instagram, and you know, uh, your style is uh, actually something funny about them. They're not finished, they're sketchy, but uh, they're rendered in parts that feel more important. Uh, was this not deliberate or uh, did you deliberately uh, uh, make that decision to render some parts or uh, and leave some uh, other parts? We as human beings uh, look around us and we see every single detail possible, right? We see everything from, we look at a tree, we see every leaf. Sometimes it's, it becomes too much. It becomes overwhelming, like seeing all that information. Mm -hmm. And we as artists should show the world what's it like to be, to be a, to see a simplified version of it. Like when you do a tree, you don't want to, just to render everything. I never liked that. Just there are um, artists that actually render every leaf, leaf possible, and it's crazy. And what I want to show is like simplification. Like how how can you turn this tree in uh, the most simple shape possible and still read? Still, uh, you can still associate it with a tree. You know, and with that tree, actually, a yeah. certain tree. Um, so, um, a lot of um, my focus is simplification and uh, doing less, doing doing more with less, which is that that main brush stroke that I have to use in there to just uh, describe that exact shape. Um, and then, yeah, so. Uh, Sometimes we get a lot of details, yes, and you can choose an interest point, an interest area, and you can render it a bit more. But then the other areas, um, you should let leave simplified, even flat, because that will uh, uh, an overwhelming. It will be a lot pleasing, a lot easier to read. Um, another association would be to when you enter a room that's very um, messy and everything is out of place, it feel and then you won't want to be there anymore. You want to, you want to get out of there. Mm -hmm. While when you enter a room that's very tidy, 
safety and everything is um, arranged, everything is in place, it feels better, you know, it feels a lot um, easier to, to stay there. It feels pleasant, kind of. That's kind of uh, the, the when I'm painting. Yeah, your uh, actually your focus on composition is uh, very awesome. I think you know it's a unique look. You uh, even your sketches are um, using all the compositional rules that we uh, actually learn in university or in our classes. You use uh, use a repetition and you use your uh, style as a compositional. Uh, uh, as a compositional aim, as a compositional method, and by rendering, actually, you know, a, a lot of uh, things that we uh, read about composition is uh, about the placement of objects on our canvas, uh, or you know, getting everything uh, look right in their position. But uh, you, with your style, you uh, by uh, using rendering, you make it. Uh, Actually, uh, you make uh, the focal points pop out without uh, using any uh, you know, changing the position of your uh, characters, of your drawings. And I think it's a really smart move. And uh, uh, I share my screen with you. I think you can see this uh, sketch I'm showing uh, our audiences. You know, I think it's not just sketch, it's not uh, just your study. I think these are deliberate too, you know, these lines, uh, this arc that we see here that follows this arc of the final uh, rendered character, and all these uh, diagonal lines that go through uh, her hand. Do you, um, you know, use compositional rules in your sketches, and should we see your sketches as final uh, products, uh, these sketches that you post on Instagram, or uh, are these just unconsciously very uh, compositionally correct and beautiful? The symmetry, you know, get it. I, I always try to get asymmetries and I stay away from symmetries as far as, far as I can, as, as much as I can. Um, so, making things interesting, I would say um, you can um, spot a lot of asymmetries in my stuff. Um, I always do poses that are asymmetrical, like I don't usually uh, stick with characters that are, you know, seen from the front and they have same, the, the right arm mirrors the left arm and all, stuff like that. It's always some uh, contrapost or something is, something changes, um, tilts or rotates or, and that's, uh, um, it's basically also the hardest thing to do because uh, we are also used to drawing stuff um, from uh, from the front view. Like if you if you make a beginner draw a sword or something or an axe, yeah. what they'll do is they'll just draw it just like you will see it in a plain view, like a side view or uh, the just like you would see it hanging on yeah. the wall, right? And normally, when you're doing a character, you rarely see that position. You, always, you normally see the sword coming towards the camera, you see the sword like rotating, depending on the wrist position and all that stuff. And, you know, we tend to actually draw things that are flat. And we never, beginners don't usually think of perspective and how to rotate things in perspective and don't um, usually think that the sword is actually on the side so if it sits on the side it's not going to be seen from the front it's going to be seen from three quarter view or something like that 
and it's not just straight vertical it's just the handle is coming out you know a bit coming towards the camera so that means it's foreshortened so that means it's at an angle right so um this is uh, this is the hardest part in my opinion and it, it goes with you know drawing legs and all that stuff it's the same thing just yeah, so uh you know you're talking about all these rules uh perspective for shortening and uh you know composition how do you learn all this all this stuff did you go to university and uh you know how did you get into art in the first place Um, I kind of tried getting into um, a local university and I uh, failed for some reason. Um, I started for as long as I, I mean, for, since I was a kid and I was, as long as I remember, I, I always drew something. Um, I was um, very... I mean, I wasn't introduced to painting much. I used some gouaches and acrylics at some point, but most of the times I was uh, using a pencil, and I'm very, very comfortable with mm -hmm. pencil. Um, the, but I guess when I actually started and decided that this is what I want to do was back in 2012, where when I, I think I bought my first tablet and I went digital and it was because um, I got a job opportunity and they didn't hire me because um, I wasn't doing digital um, so I said this is it this I have to kind of commit I have to commute to digital um, and um, Actually, university is in here. I mean, even if I went, even if I got in, it would have been terrible because I see people. I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to just um, put a bad word for our universities, but I see people that have come out of it. You know, that graduate, and uh, they don't know construction. They don't know structure. They know. They don't know form and shapes. They're. They look like they're just doing random stuff on paper. And teachers are praising them for it, you know, to just uh, express yourself, do do whatever you feel. Yes, you do that. I mean, that's the goal. You, you do intuitive drawing, uh, intuitive painting, and express yourself after you've learned all the theories and after you have all the knowledge. And, but they just keep that and they go straight to exploring yourself. And that's when you get, like... Um, skewed portraits and weird angles, no construction, all yeah. that stuff. And even after graduating, people still do that, and they just, I don't know, they're trying to do something with that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, this is ex the experience that I have here. Um, but um, I would say, I mean, there, there certainly are some great colleges out there. Um, and uh, I, I even heard that there are some that you just finish them and you just instantly get a job so that's how can that be bad um, but uh, it depends on where you, you are you know where you live most of the countries have a poet art education most of them actually are non-existent so yeah uh, when I started uh, back in 2012 there weren't any I mean, there wasn't no, there was wasn't Gumroad. There weren't online courses much. Um, but um, during the last few years, they just exploded. It's everywhere. You can learn anything. You know, you can. Uh, you have you have new masters academy. Just yeah. go and um, a lot of stuff about figure drawing, composition, color. From all the best masters in the world. A lot of stuff, and it's. Just, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And it's it's just a subscription based, and you can see everything. So it's cheap, it's easy, and it's very very accessible. Very, and you can you can learn whatever you want, you know, whatever medium you want. Uh, you can have um, 
you can uh, then go to I don't know other concept artists that are work in the industry. They have mentorships. Um, there are a lot of schools like you know Feng Zhu School, um, which is, uh, as far as I know, very very good at what they do. They're very good. So you once you get out of there, which is as far as I've heard, very, very tight. You just have to work like eight to wow. ten hours a day, or even more. And once you get out of there, um, you're gonna become a concept to designer instantly. You just get hired, no problem. So, but uh, yeah, it's mo- some of them are expensive. Yes, yeah, some of them are available online. Um, and some of them are really cheap, you know, like some, like the Masters Academy or even school is is pretty cheap. And again, you can, uh, I think you have to subscribe to each courses at a time, to one course at a time, but still yeah, pretty cheaper cheap. than university, of course. Uh, if you choose to learn. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Uh, but you don't have a, it's true that you, you're just uh, looking at videos and you learn by yourself. So uh, guidance, uh, it's, it's, of course you're going to pay more, but um, so yeah, most of the, most of the thing I, the things I know are from um, artists like Steve Houston, who, um, I followed a lot of his videos on New Masters Academy, um, a lot of, um, Scott Robertson stuff, a lot of uh, Michael Hampton. Yeah. Um, so, um, and of course, a lot of experimenting and a lot of trial and error, a lot of trying things out and see how they, how they go. And even if you look at my sketches, um, you rarely see one single sketch, like, and then that's it. Or, Yeah, but you say you're uh, drawing intuitively, but uh, all uh, the proportions and the construction of your shapes look really uh, actually right. And your sketches look a lot like Michael Hampton. And uh, I think you took his uh, course very seriously. And your studies are mostly, uh, you know, around. Uh, anatomy and learning shapes in human body uh, how do you you know uh, can you tell me more about your uh, study sessions and how do you study forms and how do you study anatomy And then I'm going to stop looking at the reference because I want to find much for that arm. So I know the rhythms of the arm. I know what's going on with the proportions, how wide that arm should be. It should be narrower at the wrist, you know. Um, and then, you know, the same thing with the whole body. You know, I see that the pose has a tilted pelvis. And the weight is this, the weight is mostly on the let's say the right leg, and I kind of take that and I put the position of the knee and then the other leg, which is probably more uh, relaxed and sometimes has a lower leg, a, lo- a lower knee position because if the pelvis is tilted, that's what's going to happen. And then I again try to look less at the reference and try to um, create my own shapes. But of course, it's this is, doesn't doesn't come overnight. You have to study a lot and understand what types of shapes, right? And understand what's uh, appeal. 
and um, but it's always even when you're I see people studying some uh, um, reference that at some point you don't see very well what's going on right and I see people just scribbling and, and trying to and not knowing how to how to cover that part you know where, where they, they don't really understand what's going on and I when I see that, I un immediately understand that they're copying their subjects, right? They're not trying to understand what is the form and what's going on in terms of um, the, the structure and uh, basic forms. So I always try to... Cause if you think about it, if you start a new character and you want to sketch something and you don't have a reference, what do you do? You have to just break it down to uh, basic uh, forms, right? You have to put a cylinder instead of an R. You have to put a box instead of a rib cage. So that's what you do. That's what I do when I study something. You know, I, I kind of get that mentality that I don't have a reference, even though it's there. So I just peek at the reference every time I'm in trouble or something. And, and it usually happens with the poses. Poses are, are really hard. And I think finding a natural pose is still, still uh, very difficult for me. And um, yeah, it, that's, that's kind of um, a good way to, to think about it. So it was... So that that's the main thing when I study. Yeah, awesome. So uh, aside from the time you're uh, studying, studying for studying anatomy, um, when you're doing final art, let's say a concept art for a character for a, a board game, do you use references, and uh, or do you just uh, draw them intuitively from imagination? Uh, it depends on the subject. If you have, if I have a very um, familiar subject, um, like um, I don't know, I tend to to draw. I mean, to look a lot at um, tribal stuff, or uh, maybe I have a lot of. Um, uh, lizard people, people, or, or something like that, or a lot of uh, anthropomorphical creatures, like maybe half uh, like a human, humanoid uh, rhino, or something like that. Um, for that, I would just take some pictures of rhinos. Like I'm interested in the rhino head, and maybe some uh, features that will be implemented, like how the hands would look like. You know, you have to kind of take some of the the feet of the rhino or whatever uh, try, try to take some what's going on with their, their folds and skin um, their colors their patterns I don't know something their uh, their horns uh, something that's that's uh, very um, Mm, that's that's uh, a detail that's important to recognize that character, right? The iconic so characteristics of uh, yeah, your subject. Yes. Um, so I don't necessarily take a pose, a reference, and I just copy it. I, I never <clears throat> usually do that. Yeah. Um, I take multiple pictures that I'm in. I'm in multiple. Um, things that I'm interested in, like details and stuff, that details that I think would be great to implement. And then I kind of use uh, all I know to just sketch it out and combine it in some way. Yes, so, uh, I've seen you exaggerate a lot of the, uh, you know, these details in your character designs or, uh, you know, I've seen you draw really big beards for uh, you know, manly characters, or I don't know, very big heads for creatures. Um, you know, uh, these exaggerations. Uh, do you think they come from all these studies and you know, finding out the 
important parts that uh, make that character or you know do you always pick a detail uh, to emphasize on and uh, you know to focus on when you're designing a character you know what's the reason behind these exaggerations I it definitely comes from studying um, and exploring and having fun with it. I don't think it's a logical thing. I don't think it's, um, I mean, sometimes maybe a, a huge character, like a hulking character that's very tall and massive, you're not gonna give him a big head because that's gonna make him small. Yeah. But uh, apart from that, um, it's it all comes back to shapes you know like uh, what kind of shapes do i like and that that's the way i'm gonna exaggerate and there's also um the the type of exaggeration when you're trying to push something further like you have someone bending over to the right side a bit and in order to exaggerate that you're gonna what you're gonna push the waist towards the left and you're gonna make him bend even more to, uh, towards the right that's gonna be the exaggerated position right so if you want to push it more that's the direction you want to go you want to go to uh bending something more or you know because um if it's slightly bent um and you're making it straight that's not an exaggeration that's weighing it down right so uh, that's the direction I, I want to go. Yeah, awesome. And, uh, you know, I'm showing uh, our viewers all the, your studies where you're talking. And uh, I'm seeing uh, some other subjects than uh, creatures and uh, anatomy designs. And uh, those are these environments. Uh, can you? Tell us more about these environments that you design. Are they for uh, concept art or do you yourself like uh, architectural design? Yeah, I do come from an architect architectural background. I've done a high school that was uh, focused on, on architectural studying. And um, I guess it, it stuck with me you know i got uh i got uh, influenced by it but i don't like it as much as as pursuing it i mean i probably would have fun with one project because i i kind of had a uh, few projects um sure if i um uh, have it in here on instagram it was um an interior an interior it was um an actual uh, a shop that i had to design a shop selling um audio stuff it was a sci-fi thing and i was i had a i remember i had a lot of fun with that but it's not gonna be on long term right because if i do it three or four times i'm gonna get bored so I kind of like it, but it's not as as um, attractive as you know characters or yeah. creatures. Um, so yeah, some, sometimes from time to time, I kind of I kind of want to do uh, an architectural study, or I see something that's really nice, and I, I want to study it. But I kind of hate perspective, even though I had I had a lot of years learning it. And it's very, I mean, if I look at someone's drawing, I instantly see some, something wrong with perspective. Um, if I, if it's the case, so I don't have to, it just takes a second to just spot mistakes. Um, but um, they're not, they're not, I, I was, um, you know, lately I've been um, more open to, um to um really understanding my my feelings deep down you know what do i feel about these kinds of studies these kinds of structures 
And I think it's not necessarily the subject, but it's also because it relates to shape design. There are a lot of shapes there, a lot of shape arrangements, a lot of proportional things like uh, all the buildings. Like I, I, for instance, I like uh, the Hong Kong buildings or maybe the, the whole um, the whole Chinese stuff, which is very overdeveloped, like uh, the very busy towns, cities, and with all the tall buildings. And they have amazing, um, and I'm not talking about the, the ones where you know, they're full of uh, glass buildings and they're just boxes. But I'm talking about some more suburb, suburban stuff where uh, there are a lot of shapes in play there. And I've seen some amazing things like uh, the ground level or the, the consider the ground level where you actually enter the building is actually higher. It's like a t 10th floor or something because uh, the access is on, is on a highway or something, a higher road. And that's very sci-fi to me. And um, there are also these, uh, there's also this um, idea of shadow and light. So if you look at my um, architectural studies, it's never just a plain light. It's always about how the sun basically uh, leaves those shadows. And there's a, an amazing play with uh, light and dark shapes. And I think that's one of the things that I like, some of, some of the things that uh, that make me uh, study those. And this, it's not necessarily the subject, but uh, maybe the ideas, like uh, shapes, like uh, values, maybe uh, contrasts, and even composition, you know, sometimes. And I also um, find it that it, it's an amazing... Um, practice to try to simplify uh, buildings, you know, because some of the stuff that's going on on top of the buildings, it's crazy, like air conditioning units and all, a, lot, a lot of pipes and stuff, um, stairs sometimes, and it's really interesting to, to have that practice. But it, it's definitely not something I would do for, for a living every day, because it's it's going to drive me nuts. Yeah, cool. So, um, you know, you're talking about all these uh, inspirations you get from suburban architectural designs and, you know, all these masters' uh, works. Can you talk more about your inspirations and where do you get them and how do you keep yourself inspired? Do you... Um, I don't know, travel a lot? Do you see works? Do you go to museums? What are your hobbies to uh, get inspired? Um, I don't travel as much. Um, I guess if I was more into architectural stuff, I guess, I mean, maybe you don't have to. I mean, we have Google Maps and 3D views. Yeah. You can just go anywhere you know and it's even better because you can see a lot of angles that you'll probably never be able to if you go there yeah. um, so maybe you, you but I, I guess it's the atmosphere you know that's that's what you it's worth traveling for um, like the energy of that place um, but um, I don't know I, I guess I keep myself inspired with my by uh, having an end goal, like where do I want to be? You know, I always, every time I lose that, I kind of get in, uh, I get down and it's like, I don't want to, I feel like I don't want to draw anymore because it doesn't make any sense and there's the purpose. So if you have the purpose, um, it's always going to keep you motivated. There's no, you won't feel like demotivated. You won't feel like you need motivation anymore. Because um, you're thinking that every sketch, every study you do, it gets you closer to your goal, you know, and it's motivating enough. It's just, you're just going to have to, 
you're gonna you're just gonna remember the feeling and you're gonna go ahead and, and do it um and of course i nowadays i kind of skip that but uh i was um browsing a lot of our, our station a while ago and getting inspiration from other artists like i don't know uh I'm I'm terrible with names. I don't remember them, but um, um, there are a lot of artists that I feel like I, I can. Um, I feel like I like their decisions, you know, uh, values and compositions and stuff like that. Uh, one of them is uh, Bayard Wu. I think that's how you pronounce it. Bayard Wu. Um, yeah. Uh, you know him? He's pretty... I, I think I if you can't think. understand you on that name. Just a second. Yeah, you can just uh, uh, you know, send me his or her name on Skype and yeah, Bayer Wu. Yeah, I got yeah, sent. Okay, thing. so it's um, Bayer Wu. Yeah, awesome works. Wow. Awesome, yeah. A lot of flows and dynamic poses and a lot of extreme exaggerations. Yeah. 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 Good, awesome. So, so uh, you don't um, get art blocked sometimes? Uh, I used to do, yeah, of course, everyone does. Um, and I guess we have bad days and good days. I mean, if you're expecting to have a, a constant of, of amazing days, you're kidding yourself. Mm -hmm. right? Every artist, including masters, I can tell you that they have bad days. And I've even watched Steve, Steve Houston do some very weak drawings and I have a lot of uh, admiration for him and you can imagine that if someone like Steve Houston it means that you don't have to put as much pressure on yourself when you're actually learning when you're a student because um, it's human you know to have a, a bad day and not perform as well every no. day so you know an, an art block is uh, how do you even how do you even uh, uh, describe that you don't you just don't want to draw at all right you want to quit or you don't you want to draw or you're trying to draw but nothing comes out or I mean, you're in the position of self-doubt and depression. Uh, all these things come together to uh, block you artistically. Right. So it's a problem of starting to draw, or is it a problem of getting something decent to, to done? Uh, it's different from person to person. It's uh, one of the main questions my followers ask on Instagram. Uh, yeah, yeah, they uh, all uh, kind of had this problem, and they said, "Just please ask Lev, what's the solution to art blocks? How can you be pro uh, productive all the time?" I have it in my questions. What's um, your solution to art blocks exactly? <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard to be productive all the time. That's definitely. Um, one thing you can do is again think about where do you want to go, where do you want to be, and make a list of things that you have to do, like a call to action. Right? I want to be an illustrator. 
I have to learn this and that, and I have to practice sketching, you know, you know, uh, poses and, and characters and stuff. So every time you feel bad about it, I don't know, it, um, well, for whatever reason, you think back at your goal and you think, you say that, hey, I have to do this because at the end, um, I'm getting to that um, end goal. And it's always a cozy place, you know, when you're, when you've reached your, your highest goal, like you were, you're successful, whatever kind of artist you want to be, you know, you're working for whatever. Um, I honestly don't want to be working for her companies anymore, but I'm uh, mostly uh, focusing on, I mean, my, my dream is creating my own stuff. Um, but, um, perhaps you can't do it alone, you know, and you have to kind of, sometimes you have to uh, collaborate with a lot of other, other artists. Um, and, um, uh, other times, um, I, but I, I wouldn't call it art block, but it's something that happens when I just start drawing and it just, I can't get anything decent. And I don't know why it happens, but it does. And the way I, I kind of get rid of it is just keep going. Um, and it's, I realize it's sort of like I need to warm up for like two hours. So imagine two hours, I can't even, I, I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm gonna ever show what happens in my warm up session where I'm trying to draw a portrait and everything is like, it feels like I don't know anything about portraits. Like, and I even start going back to an analyzing and saying, what am I doing wrong? Right. I'm just getting all the, um, theory out and just starting questioning each and every single uh, point and trying to figure out, um, what am I doing wrong? And then after, about two hours that I kind of noticed that's the warm-up period and after two hours everything comes in intuitively and I just do amazing stuff without even thinking about it so it's like I don't I don't know what's going on um, but apparently um, if you keep going you you get over that um, bad uh, you know period, time, whatever. Um, and another another thing that I would, um, I remember being down and I'm not wanting to draw anymore. And suddenly I browse some, some art station and I see an amazing artwork. And I, was, and I was thinking that's exactly what I want to go, what I want to do. And it's not that I, I uh, start copying that or studying that. It just gives me an, an impulse, you know, like, hey, I, this guy can do it. I can do it, too. You know, I get instantly motivated. But um, I guess that's when you don't have a style and you don't have, you don't, you're not established and you need uh, exterior sources for motivation. But when, once you're... Um, um, satisfied with your work you can use that as a as an inspiration you look at your work that you've done you know a week ago and you say look at how amazing that is and you remember the feeling you know when you you actually finished it and you posted it and all that stuff and even the process you know how fun was it when you did it and um of course you you, you have to get motivated because it feels good you know to have finished something and to have a good quality product and you'll definitely want to do more um so i guess that's very strong motivation if you can get there if you can get to the point where your own work is your motivation because um you are satisfied with it you know you, you I think all of us can, uh, all of us are aspiring for more. 
maybe not everything is perfect, but at least it, it has a, a decent vibe, you know, it has a decent look to it. Hmm. Yeah. Awesome. So you encourage yourself with more work when you were established and you didn't have your style and now you do it in another way, but by, uh, you know, encouraging yourself with your own work in just another way, another way. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, um, actually, a lot of my followers uh, ask this question that, you know, uh, a lot of Iranian artists are considering, uh, you know, to immigrate to other countries, and a lot of them uh, choose Europe as their destination. So, I just wanted to know what um, industries have you worked in, like film, games, uh, board games, and how was your experience? Uh, how's the climate of business work uh, for artists, for concert artists in Europe, and especially in Romania? In Romania, you don't want to, you don't want to talk about that. <laughs> um, no, no. Oh. Um, I haven't. I mean, not much movie stuff. I had a, I worked as a concert artist in, for an animation that was locally done. Um, it was actually cancelled, so not not much to talk about. Um, and not, I don't have much studio work experience. Um, I've done a lot of freelancing. Uh, every time I try to collaborate, it just didn't work. Uh, it just went super bad. Um, and maybe because um, I usually care too much about what I do, you know, but I care about care too much about my artwork and. Uh, when I'm trying to, to get the best I can and someone else comes in and kind of ruins it, I get really upset, you know, and uh, I remember having, a, it was a freelance collaborative, but still uh, we were three artists trying to do a pretty big illustration. It was um, a bunch of monsters and uh, two other characters um, and some background stuff and I remember I was uh, maybe it wasn't um, 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 synchronizing or I don't know it was a problem with, uh, with our style stuff. but I was trying to do something and they were coming up with something else and we were just pushing it up and down and it was at the end you know, some one artist started uh, photo bashing it and it went super bad um, while I was trying to you know do my own painting and stuff like that. Uh, and simplification and um, creating contrast with values and stuff um, but um, I mean, it d depends on. I think um, maybe that's why st studios like maybe Six Mile Vodka uh, have a strict requirement of their style because they do a lot of collaborative. I think, um, and um, they have to be able to you know one start one artist starts it and the other finishes. And I think it's the problem. It's a problem with in, in uh, doing illustration because uh, concept art. I don't think it's. I don't think it matters that much when you're doing concept art. I mean uh, the style. Yeah. So. Um, so you say uh, the best way to uh, work in your country or. Uh, for people with your characteristics to do, uh, do freelance work and, you know, well, first of all, tell them that you're uh, kind of focused on your art and you have your own style. 
And, and does it get them to work? Um, Do you think, uh, you know, this attitude to, uh, towards the work uh, can get people works? Or, or how is your process of getting works, you know, with that uh, kind of uh, mentality? I think first, uh, you shouldn't have the idea that I want to be a concert artist or I want to do, I want to do art to get money. That's very, I think that's a, a very bad way of just starting out. Um, because, um, in this industry, you're, you're going to burn out really fast if you don't enjoy it, if you're not super passionate because, uh, it's not because, um, you're gonna maybe not because um, you're gonna hate it or stuff like that because our actually it's more like like someone else is gonna be more passionate on that subject and because you're passionate you're usually uh, getting a more better a more better quality in art because you know, someone that's creating creatures is going to look into places you're never going to even think about if you're not passionate mm -hmm. about creatures. So he's going to come up with ideas you'll never think about because you're not passionate enough. So you'll never be as high as those passionate artists. Uh, now, it depends on, on your goal, right? If, you, if you're uh, happy with doing... 50 in my like 10 percent of each subject like doing environments and characters and creatures and but not being the best at it then you'll probably do fine and um but i'm, I'm not that guy uh i want to always wanted to do something um like a few things like one or two things and be the best at at those so it, it depends on what your um uh, you're aiming for, as I said. Um, I don't know if being the jack of all trades gives you more opportunity. I guess it does, because um, um, I guess you can uh, you can find more jobs because um, you'll get a higher range, right? But um, I don't know how much you can you can imagine that raising five or six different skills at the same time is, is a lot harder, you know? So you should focus on one skill like environments to get like one or two years. In one or two years, you're gonna get decent work mm -hmm. done. Uh, and you'll be able to imagine, you'll be able to get uh, very good jobs and maybe pay well as well. As, as well. And while trying to raise, you know, a, a set of different skills is going to take you a lot more and you're going to get probably not so good jobs and not pay very well because you're a beginner. And it kind of depends. And I think it's very important. Um, I'm coming back to the idea that you have to have a goal and you have to know where you're going because... If you're starting, if you're starting out with environments and you do environments and you actually land a job, suddenly you have environments in your portfolio, and guess what? People will hire you for environments because that's what your portfolio yeah. shows. And maybe you don't want to do environments. Maybe you want to do creatures or characters. You know, so be careful what you show and be careful what you want to do because it's kind of if you just flow around and just take whatever whatever is available you're gonna end up in a place that you probably feel like you don't belong and later on even if you become very good at it I've seen examples um, people get very sad and they're very they kind of die inside because as an artist you kind of want to find your your deep um, desires you know like because we're working with emotional stuff and we're not pushing numbers, you know. And um yeah, I've seen I've seen very good I forgot his name, but it was a very, very good environment artist, uh, that 
actually said he she just he just quit and started doing characters. Um, it happens, you know. It's just, uh, and I think that's that's what's the problem with the industry today, you know, because uh, um, they they're in a studio. And again, I'm I'm talking about um, what I've heard, and I shouldn't uh, because it's not my own experience. But usually, you get to do what they need, you know. Especially in Romania, like we have a few st uh, studios like uh, Ubisoft, GameLoft, and EA Games, and I uh, they con uh, they contacted me once for uh, actually twice for an interview and the second time I went through all that interview which is a pain you know you have to just do two tests online and then you fly over to there it was in another city so I uh, flew over and I gave a whole d a day of uh, a test so like pretending I worked there for a day so they can see, they can see how I work and then in the end this was all realistic mm -hmm. style and then in the end, they kind of say, oh, we're, you're okay, we're uh, happy with your work, but we have to do cartoony stuff. <laughs> Are you serious? I mean, what? And they've seen your portfolio so, like, and they came out that and doesn't reached, make any sense. Uh, reached to you, yeah? Yeah. So they must have known yeah, that exactly. your style is not cartoony. Yeah, I did the uh, tests were realistic and all that stuff. And they just, the thing is, they just make you work whatever they have, uh, you know, whatever the project they just uh, came in. So if they have a cartoony, if they need environments and you're a character artist, they're going to put you make, to do environments. That's what happens in a studio. So you're, you're kind of, uh, I'm talking about the smaller studios. Maybe not, maybe that's not going to happen at Blizzard. I don't know. Because in there, uh, everyone is specialized or something like that. But when they have, you know, like three or four concept artists, um, you're going to have to do a lot of stuff that you don't yeah. like. You're going to have to do a lot of 3D. You're going to do a lot of photo bashing because, you know, uh, we have a realistic project and we don't need painted stuff. We need photo bash. And then you're frustrated and... Uh, sick and tired of it and you go home and you draw something you know uh, again this is this is uh, I've seen this before as well or I've seen people uh, say they do so much environments that they forgot they forget to, to draw characters so they go home and practice like that's yeah. sad you know but I, I guess it's it's work and uh, you know uh, you know it's goes back to the thing that you know that saying uh, that if you do what you love you'll never work a day in your life um, I don't know if it's true or not uh, I guess uh, it's very difficult to find the exact point the exact area that you love and also the client at least let uh, trust you enough to let you actually develop the exact thing, your exact mm, vision, yes. you know. Because uh, most of the times um, they're they're having their own vision and they're just paying you to do it. You know, it doesn't matter if you have the same vision. It doesn't matter if you agree with their vision. You're just getting paid to do it. That's that's a concept art. They are just like there they're to make their visions come to reality. Um, actually. There's questions. My uh, there's a question my followers asked, and I think it's a good time to ask it. Um, they said that okay, I want to do uh, freelance illustration in the future. Uh, what should I do? Consider me being a total beginner, and I want to start learning and uh, get to where you are, so I can uh, get freelance work that I like and. Uh, freelance work that uh, my vision is more important than uh, the client's vision and uh, 
you know, the, the final artwork is my illustration. It's not concept art for games, not uh, concept art for films. It's just my illustration, my uh, freelance work, and my clients. So what do you have to do, Mom? Um, Sorry, what? Um, so the question The question was, is, what should what I... Do you, uh, the, what do does you have to yeah, do? Yeah, yeah. Right? Where should I start? Um, so complete beginner. Um, it depends on, um, again, the subject, right? If it's character, I mean, uh, illustration is, is a very, very hard um, area. Um, or if you're doing uh, storyboarding or stuff like that. Uh, because imagine that, you know, concept artists can specialize in doing characters or vehicles or I don't know, ships or environments, and you'll only do that. While as, a, as an illustrator, you'll get scenes of, I mean, again, it depends on what kind of illustration, but usually if you're talking about stuff that Bayard Wu does, uh, if you notice, he's got a lot of crazy stuff going on. Like he's got dragons, he's got orcs, characters, um, horses. I mean, you have to be able to do all that stuff. And if you're just starting out and you want to do all of them, that's going to be really hard, you know. And as a concept artist, though, they, you know, you have to focus on, on one only characters. And there is going to be characters that are uh, predominantly sitting, uh, standing, you know, in a pose, you know, like uh, a, a straight pose. Like you, you don't usually see crazy dynamic poses in concept art. Um, so again, that's easier. So you can focus on um, some uh, more simple stuff or less things actually. And uh, if you if you focus on less things, it's easier to learn, right? Um, so I would suggest starting with some concept art, even getting some concept art again for uh, maybe. Um, board games or stuff. There are a lot of board games going on, being created, and that's amazing because usually the clients are um, passionate about art and stuff like that, and they want you to do art. They don't want to do, you know, crazy design, and that's it. Um, and your art is going to be finished, a finished product. So you obviously you're going to want it to. You're going to put your time into it you know, and be passionate about it because you know people are going to see that. Well, if you're being asked to do a sketch that no one's going to see um, at, um, except for the maybe the clients and the 3D modelers, then you're not going to focus too much on aesthetics. So uh, again, I suggest starting out with these kind of concepts, uh, small concept art projects. Maybe those that uh, are uh, launching Kickstarters and stuff like that. Um, as I said, there are a lot of them. And, um, you know, even, even uh, in our, I, on our station, I thought there were only studios hiring. But uh, nowadays, I kind of get a lot of stuff from uh, these kind of developers, indie developers. Um, so, yeah. This, this is kind of the easiest step, like learning. So let's say you want to do character, or you said you want to do illustration. It depends on, again, what type of illustration, what type of setting. Oh, is it sci-fi illustration? Is it fantasy illustration? Um, you shouldn't get a high range of subjects from the start. You should build it up, you know, like you're starting an... Uh, a new character in an RPG game. You don't start with a thousand skills in level 100. You start with level one and you have two skills and then you get to level two and you have one more skill. This is how you start, you know, in uh, in, in illustration. You start learning, but then go 
start learning how to draw, you know, uh, more dynamic characters, and then clothing, and then armor, and then uh, different setups, different maybe sci-fi armor. Um, then if you go sci-fi, you learn how to <clears throat> how to draw, I don't know, maybe architectural stuff, maybe vehicles, maybe motorbikes, maybe airplanes, I don't know, ships. If you go fantasy, maybe you want to learn how to draw trees and backgrounds and, um, I don't know, uh, wooden houses and grass and um, clouds and, I don't know, open areas, you know. Um, and maybe eventually go to drawing horses and uh, dragons and, I don't know, it just, it shouldn't jump too much from you know from uh, one to another like you have you know human anatomy and then maybe it's easy to just draw a minotaur right because it's just um the bull's um, legs and hooves and then the head but the rest is human anatomy so it, it, it doesn't jump too much from human anatomy from characters but if you're from humans you want to draw a dragon it's kind of kind of a high jump because you need a lot of uh, reptile anatomy you need to understand what's going on with those wings uh, the head is very, very complicated you need a lot of lizard studies and stuff like that so uh, no that's that's the main idea like take it take it easy one at a time one subject at a time and it, it's easier to find jobs that way because uh, you're going to be good at something, right? Because if you start doing everything at once, you're you're never going to be good at anything unless you're spending like five years, or, you know, or something. So in all the five years that you're learning everything at once, you'll be bad at everything. You'll get demotivated because if you continue to do bad stuff, you probably go down. Your motivation will go down and it's going to be harder to work harder to keep up well if you study one at a time you're going to get motivated because you're good at something you're going to get good results and you're going to be able to keep going you know and keep researching keep the, keep going to the next subject and so on yeah awesome and that's that's kind of it. Think very hard on what it, what exactly you want to do, and uh, it's it's. I I think it should be easy, you know, because every time uh, when someone tells you about a subject, in your mind it's actually it's uh, either I like the subject and it sounds interesting, or I don't like the subject. Yeah, so it's kind of easy. So just uh, separate the subjects that you find interesting and then think of what exactly would I want to draw, would I want to, because I kind of like Star Wars ships as well, you know, but I wouldn't draw them. I like some cars, I would draw cars because there's a lot of stuff going on in there, a lot of a lot of things that uh, don't I'm not passionate about. But uh, I kind of like seeing mechs, you know, um, again, there are some some things I wouldn't like to uh, spend time solving, like uh, I know wrists and connections and mechanical stuff. Even though I kind of I kind of draw some of them uh, at some point, uh, because um, maybe sometimes I find an inter an interesting thing, but that's it. You know, the rest is not that interesting. And if I push towards that it becomes very overwhelming um, and so yeah be very um, aware and not just on the surface level you know be aware in, in how you feel about certain subjects and how certain subjects make you feel when you're drawing them you know and it, don't just it shouldn't be based on the thing that, oh, I don't know perspective, so it's very hard to do this uh, spaceship because my perspective is wonky and it doesn't look good. Mm, the subject, you know, you should, you should uh, think about the subject or 
the final result. Uh, what if you could do it and what if you're getting there? Imagine yourself uh, getting a good you know, spaceship. Does that make you feel good? If it does, you should keep going. If it doesn't, then uh, it's probably not for you. So the uh, path gets clear once you know what you're going to do and uh, the works just guide you. So let's see. Yeah. yeah. So for the final question, Vlad, uh, where do you see yourself in 10 years? 10 years. Um, <laughs> can I say on Mars? No. I don't know. You can do whatever you want. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, as I said, I was, um, I, I'm focusing on a lot of. Um, story driven illustration and that's kind of my goal just making making a ton of sketches of characters interacting and um, eventually maybe uh, creating my own thing um, or even uh, I, it's I mean you could uh, find a, a good uh, story to illustrate but um, sometimes it's not exactly your vision um, I, I guess that's what I uh, feel right now, and I kind of want to make a lot of, a lot, a few more videos, even a course on Gumroad. It's kind of uh, in plan. Um, much about it because uh, I haven't. Uh, it's not. It's not very clear yet, but. Um, Again, this is not something that I don't want to. I there are artists that don't care about you know drawing and, and con doing concepts and stuff. They just want to teach, and uh, I, I appreciate that. But that's not me. Um, I enjoy contributing to the community, you know, and uh, I, I've learned a lot of stuff from other artists and from experience and from uh, uh, trying out things. And most because once you share them, you realize uh, you need to uh, find something else, you know, to share and use yourself to, to learn new things. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, I, I want to do a, a, some some teaching but uh it's not my main focus uh, obviously. it's not your main focus but you've got three gumroad courses and all of them have five uh, star rating and people can find you on gumroad.com slash valent and artstation.com slash valent and instagram.com slash black um i don't have any more questions it was really uh, a great experience talking to you and i really enjoyed interviewing you uh, our viewers our viewers are mostly people who uh, either want to start uh, learning digital art concept art illustration uh, etc or uh, people who are in the middle of uh, their journey to becoming a great artist um, is there anything you want to tell them Um, uh, I guess uh, have fun don't stress about it I um, found out that uh, you know the it, go, it goes back to how the human brain works you know you have to whenever you um, you have to kind of give it some time to for the, the mind to take it in and if you're constantly stressing yourself that oh that artist works for 12 hours a day and he's gonna get there faster than me um you're gonna pro you're gonna you're probably gonna burn out and you're gonna quit whatever you're doing it's not only about art it's about whatever subject you're you're trying to to do and i um of course, you don't want to get into the, the other extreme that you play games all day and say, oh, I'm going to train for becoming a good concept artist, but I'm playing games. Um, you want to 
create a, a balance and a, I, I think a schedule is also important because um, if you're if you want to be a professional you have to understand that there is no oh I'm waiting for the right mood to create this project they want it now and you probably have a deadline so you'll have to make be aware that this or at, at a certain time for instance in the mornings for four hours you have have to work and this is work time whatever you do after that it doesn't matter you know but having a schedule and uh, um, getting your mindset to um, have a certain time of the day that you actually do work and it doesn't have to be you know uh, client work if you don't have client work but you have to actually do something that um, makes you evolve right learning stuff or uh, researching or um, and I, I think it kind of becomes easier uh, with the procrastination things and because you know um, a lot of times and I've been there you say I'm, I'm not in the mood uh, to do that and I'm not, I'm not in the mood to start drawing and but if you have a schedule and it's it's like uh, I have to start drawing because that's what I do every day at this time uh, you're gonna get over that very very easily so um, the most important thing is have fun and don't don't stress too much about it don't stress that you're not good enough yet don't stress about the fact that someone else is working harder I don't think that's a motivation thing uh, I think it's it's more more important to stay healthy health is important is more important than actually working hard because if, if your health is low you won't be able to focus properly and you'll never deliver the results that you would if you would be rested and healthy and, and, and you know uh, eating well and all that stuff having high levels of energy because we are if you are want to be a concept artist and you want to create stuff from scratch trust me there's going to be a lot of energy involved it's a lot of creative energy if you work for five, four hours, you know, uh, copying something, that's already there. You just take a photo and you copy it and you study it. It's not going to be much of, it's not going to burn much energy. But try creating something from scratch, you know. Uh, try to solve some problems. Try to create a composition uh, from scratch. Try to, you know, create a creature or something in in four hours you you'll see you're gonna get uh, a lot of energy consumed so health is very important and also the other aspects in your life are very important like social if you think that you can um, stay away from humanity and just work all day long you'll find that at some point you're gonna um, your work will suffer you're not gonna be as good as um, you're not getting your best, uh, you're, gonna be, you're not going to deliver your best work because that is part of your your life. As a you know, it's always important to have a balanced life. And I kind of find out I found this out recently because I was all also crazy about focusing on my art, and I thought, hey, I'm gonna mail this and then I'm going to focus on the other things in my life and um, I found out that actually focusing on all of them and trying to um, fix you know um, love life and relationships and um, friends and social stuff and health and you know whatever else there may might be in your life um, solving those uh, is going to mm, create a free way to, you know, um, your career, you know, your art, and you're going to, you're going to, 
get a lot better results by you know having this balanced life so maybe some of you are young and you can you know skip sleeping for the for a night and keep working and stuff like that but um trust me when you get to 30 you're gonna feel that and it's not gonna be it's not gonna be nice yeah thank you Vlad thank you uh, for having this talk with me